Brett Seneff. And I'm Nate Rapp. And today we're doing the first ever Wilton Town Talk, and we're greeted by E.J. Denunzio, the Wilton High School varsity football head coach. Um, first off, I wanted to congratulate you on your uh, past season and making it to the state championship. Um, what was it like going through that season and reaching the state championship? Well, first of all, Matt, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, it's always great to interview with you guys. Um, listen, it was, qu it was quite a ride. Um, you know, going into the season, I really wasn't sure. Um, I thought we had a pretty good team, um, but the schedule was tough. And uh, we had a nice start to the season. And then our middle of the season, we have our usual New Canaan, Darien, Staples. And uh, we lost that. Uh, we lost Staples and New Canaan, two close games. Um, and then that was like the turning point of our season when we had to face Darien. Big win for us. Um, and then later in the season, we had Shelton. So, listen, I thought the season was uh, – we were resilient at times. Um, and I think we played um, up to our potential at times, sometimes better than we thought we would. Uh, but uh, it was tough to lose the last one. Uh, but it was a great ride, for sure. Well, with your, your success, what strategies did you use to help contribute to it? Well, I think, you know, with, with our team, um, Wilton High School football, is oh, we always have tough kids, right? Um, and I think we've put together a staff that really gets the most out of our kids. And um, I think what was really one of, the, one of the best things that I saw this year was the way our coaches taught um, nuances. Uh, we changed up the offense a little bit. Um, change up the defense a little bit. Um, for the first year, I had uh, Coach McAndrews, coach in the defensive side, did a great job. But it's tough, you know, your first year being a defensive coordinator. So I thought that we all gelled as a staff, and I thought we were able to get across to the kids some of the newer stuff that we did. And I thought the kids, as always, executed fantastic. And, and that's the thing. You can, you can throw things at kids. Doesn't mean they're always going to get it. Doesn't mean they're always going to understand it. But these kids at Wilton, they – they grasp it, and they did a really good job executing what we put forth. And being a head coach at Wilton, what has been some of your favorite memories or moments shared with the teams that you've coached? So the first and foremost memory I have is when I got the phone call from Mr. McDougal telling me I had the job. You know, that was in itself, uh, uh, for me, a great accomplishment because I hadn't coached in over 20 years. And my first year back, I'm coaching the freshman team as like an assistant. So I'm kind of like low man on a totem pole. Uh, but you know what I did was I did the best I could. I did my job 100%. I didn't step on my head coach's toes. And uh, I, I think I, I proved myself to players and parents. And when the job opportunity opened up, I, I got the job. So that was probably my first. Um, but I would say, obviously, the New Canaan game, uh, when we beat New Canaan for the first time, um, Obviously, the Richfield game, when we beat Richfield for the first time as our rivalry game. Um, you know, those moments I'll never forget. Um, you, never, you, know, you never forget players, um, and you don't always forget games either. They're special too. But I think what, what's, what's really great about Wilton is that we've built this thing now where, you know, football is kind of important. You know, it, it, you, you take football, like we used to be four and six, five and five, six and four. We, you know, we're right in the middle of the pack, some years seven and three. But over the last five or six years, we've been able to raise the bar a little bit. And I think that excites everybody, you know, not just the players and coaches. It's the student body. It's uh, the town. It's the administration. And, and that's what's great about it. It's, it's enjoyable coming to school knowing that you're in a playoff game in the state playoffs and you have something to play for, opposed to it's November, it's 15 degrees out, it's dark, and no one wants to practice because you're two and six, you know. Yeah. So um, those have been some of my, my more memorable moments here at Will. I guess also to focus on like the athlete part, how do you help athletes with academics? Yep. So, you know, when I first got here, I had plans, right? I'm a, I want to make sure everybody sits in the first two rows. I want everybody to be polite and friendly. That doesn't always work, right? Uh, but what I try to do is we try to monitor how the student athlete is doing throughout the year, right? I, I, don't, I don't want a teacher to call me and say, Coach, I want to let you know, you know, Johnny's failing um, in my class. That's too late. So there's definitely an open dialogue amongst teachers and about how the students or athletes are doing. Um, once we get to the point where um, a student athlete is um, struggling, at that point we'll say, listen, let's get whatever help we need to get, whether you have to stay after school, whether we have to get you a tutor. Um, because, listen, academics is most important. The worst thing that can happen for me as a coach is to have a coach from a school 
come into my office and say, hey, coach, player, you know, player A is on our radar. Do you think he'll fit our team? And I say, yeah, absolutely. He could play at your level. Well, does he fit us academically? And that's where if you have a 3-2, 3-5, yeah, most schools are going to fit. When you have that 2-7, 2-8, now the doors kind of shrink on you. The doors close. So uh, it's very important that we keep our kids, our student athletes up, um, grades up. Um, I don't like any kids to have any C's on their, on their GPA. We try to keep that uh, above uh, a C. Um, and listen, it's obviously it's the student's job to do their work, but at me as a coach, if I don't follow up and I don't check on it, you know, then I'm really negligent because it is part of my job. So, um, we're on top of it and hopefully we get to the point where we start to look at colleges, we start to profile colleges and if it fits us on the field, as well as in a classroom, then we start to go after those schools. So you win Coach of the Year. What's it like to be recognized by the county as Coach of the Year? So, you know, for me, I think it's it's great really for the town first. I really believe that, right? Because I don't know how many of our coaches, probably I think Coach Egan might have won Coach of the Year back, you know, when they were still recording Coach of the Year back in, you know, 1700s. Um, <laughs> it, it was great because it brought to the forefront, you know, Wilton High School football. That's all I really care about, you know? Um, to me, it's embarrassing. I'm not one that really likes the attention. I, I, I don't like it. Um, so, you know, to see teachers, um, administration all come into my classroom and congratulating me, my players, um, you guys who aren't on the team, um, congratulating me. You know, it means a lot. But all that means is that my coaching staff and my players have done something that has gotten me the attention just because I'm the head coach. Um, you know, if you don't have the players and you don't have the coaching staff, you're never going to be successful. It's going to be really hard, um, but you're certainly never going to win coach of the year. So as I said at the banquet, um, coach of the year, um, the award is not about me. It's about all of my coaches who work just as hard as I do, um, watching film, breaking down film. And it's about my players who are able to execute um, what we give them at practice. Um, that's why I was coach of the year. So uh, it was it was a great honor, though, and I think it's great for Wilton football and for any sport in Wilton. Yeah, to add on to that, um, how have parents been supportive to not only you but the players, too? Like, yep. I guess it were, in other words, like, how have they helped you and, like, the team's success? Yeah. So I think one of the best things, I, I could have said this was one of the greatest moments of, of my career at Wilton so far is, on our way up to North Haven, up, up to CCSU to play North Haven in the championship game, we have our two buses going up. And there were probably 50 to 100 parents, kids, um, little guys on our youth program, all lining um, the bus route to leave Wilton High School. And, uh, you know, it's a moment that kind of chokes you up uh, because you don't, really expect that kind of support at 7 a.m. in the morning. Um, but it's great. And I, I, you know, I filmed it. I looked around the bus and I'm seeing kids, big smiles on their faces. Some of them had tears in their eyes. You know, that's what it's all about. It's the experience. Well, you know, you want to go there and win, obviously. But to have that, Nate, you know it, right? To have that experience of playing in a championship game, whether it's an FCAC or a state championship game, it's awesome. And um, the, I know the kids will never forget it. I'll never forget it. Um, but to have the town support, you know, I don't live in Wilton, um, but when I am in Wilton, if I go to the pizzeria or I go to the deli, you know, I, to hear people talking about Wilton football, our successes, it's great. Um, I love it. And I love it for the for the main reason of, of my kids who put in all the time and effort. And we ask a lot of them for them to get recognized as a state championship football team that, that just missed. It means a lot to me. Darn, I wish... We would have won that last game, but that doesn't diminish the season that we had. Yeah. Going off what you said really earlier about how before you were there, the Wilson football teams were like four and six. And you know, I remember my brother used to play football. And like now that you've come, like now our football is on the rise. How do you continue to build off the success of making it to the state championship? <laughs> so, right. That's what's scary. Yeah. Right. Um you know, I think the first thing is, you know, what is your foundation? You know, 
if I'm just coaching my juniors and seniors and some sophomores um, and trying to get the most out of them, uh, yeah, maybe you have one or two, maybe three good years, right? But what about those freshmen, that freshman team? Um, what about the youth program that's coming up? So as you know, my players will tell you, um, I'm at as many JV and freshman games as I can get to. I need them to understand that they are just as important, if not more important, than my team because that's what's coming up in the next two, three, or four years. Um, so really we put a lot of attention into our, into our, um, our JV and, and freshman programs. I have three of my better coaches coaching at the freshman level just because it's that important. I also think it's important that the youth program continues to thrive. You know, I think we do now three camps, one in April, two in the summer. We're going to do one this year where we combine the lacrosse camp with the football camp. So they're going to do like 45 minutes of football, an hour of lacrosse, and, you know, in the morning. So it be great. Uh, but I think that's imperative because when you don't have a youth program or if you're a youth program, you know, you're losing numbers, well, that's going to affect you when they become ninth graders. So I'm trying to get the word out, and it's great that this goes out to the whole community. Um, I'm trying to make them understand that football right now is as safe as, as it has ever been. Um, I get it, concussions. I get parents who are worried about that, no doubt. Um, but I also get parents who are afraid that, well, my son is a, is a baseball player, and I don't know if he should play football. Um, so in order to keep the message out there that, hey, you know what? Year after year, we have an injury here or there for sure. Uh, but football is not this awful game that people think of CTE and concussions. Uh, it's a sport that when you play it, the lessons that you learn, you take with you for the rest of your life. You become better communicators. You understand time management. You understand what it means to get knocked down because if you don't get back up, you're not going to be successful. But you also learn it's not about you, right? When you go out in the world and you graduate from college and you have your first job and whatever that you, you you're going to understand that, you know what, the success of the business, sure, you're going to help that. But it's not about you. It's about the entire group. And I tell my kids, listen, 10 guys could do, make, do the right thing. My five guys make great blocks. My two receivers do the right thing. But all of a sudden, my running back, you know, gets tackled for a loss behind the line of scrimmage because he slipped or one player is can determine, a, you know, can change a great play to a bad play. So I think that's what I love about football. It's such a group team effort, and the bond that you build playing football will last forever. And I tell my guys, I guarantee them, when you're 30 or 40 years old, you have your first baby or whatever big thing happens in your life, I guarantee one of the guys you reach out to is one of your high school teammates that played football. Just the way it is. Um, so I love the sport. We have to continue getting young people out there playing. It's great that we have a flag program, but eventually I hope that flag program turns into someone playing flag and now playing tackle. So it's important that, to answer your question, um, it's important that we continue to grow this program. We can't just, you know, say, hey, listen, we, you know, we lost in the championship game, but, you know, things are going to be great. You know, things are on the rise. No, it's hard work. It's a lot of hard work. And it's guys like the guys that are that are filming this now. It, it's it takes everybody, um, and it will always take um, our student athletes uh, the grit and the grind that they have shown to continue um, from fourth grade all the way up until twelfth grade. Here's another question: um, How involved are the athletes within the youth program? Because I know for the cross, yeah. we do camps with like, or we do volunteer camps during season and that like during the fall season too, where we usually have probably like five to ten guys working with little kids. Yep. Um, how is football accomplished in that? Yeah. So, I, I, I mean, I've seen you guys out there. So so we do the exact same thing. Um, I got to tell you, you know, a young seven, eight-year-old kid would much rather see you showing them how to do a drill than me, right? Um, yeah, they might think it's cool that it's the high school football coach. Great. But they're more interested in the starting offensive lineman or the cool running back or receiver or quarterback. So we try to implement that bond early. So, you know, this year is going to be one of the first years we're going to have some of our kids go down to um, Cider Mill. We're going to do like a book reading to them. They're going to wear their jerseys. I'm hoping that they create their own book, right? It's going to be about the lessons they've learned from 
you know, being in middle school coming up, whatever the case may be, cider milling up. Um, so they're going to read to the kids and that will start that bond, you know, and then as those kids get older, they start coming to the camps. Now they say, oh, look, that was a kid that read to me in class. Now he's showing me how to run around or now he's showing me how to throw a football. So um, love having my guys run camps. My coaches all want to help. They all do. Uh, but I'll tell you the, the, the best, the, the most effective way for us to get young people excited about football is having my guys out there at camp with them watching, helping them and having them watch my guys um, do whatever it is that, that we're doing drills or whatever it may be. So you, you spoke about it briefly. How do you, uh, how do you implement like a, if a student athlete wants to go to the collegiate level, how do you implement like a way that, that makes it possible? Yep. So, <clears throat> you know, when I was growing up, um, they just started coming out with these, um, NASA has one, um, these businesses that help you get into college, right? Parents pay a lot of money. First thing I tell every parent is, number one, if your son or daughter is good enough to play college, whatever it is, um, they will usually find you at the Division One level. It's the Division Two and Three levels where you got to do some work. So what I do with football is I have all my guys basically create a spreadsheet. Um, we write down what schools they're interested in. We write down whatever contact they've had with a coach. We write down what was talked about, what did they communicate about. Uh, if there's a camp that that school has, we, we mark that down. So we really take it one step at a time. Um, and it's it, it's really a whole, it's the mom and dad, it's the student athlete, it's me, it's the recruiting coach. All of us have to be involved because it's the biggest decision that you guys will make in your life, you know, and certainly up to this point. Um, you want to make the right decision. And I tell my guys, I say, guys, have you thought about it? You want to go where it's hot? You want to go where it's cold. You want to stay close to home. So if you want to drop your laundry off to mom, you can. Or do you want to be, you know, 200 miles away? Um, do you want to play right away? Right? Do you want to go to a small or maybe Division two school where you could start right away? Or do you want to go to a Division one school that, you know, it, you may not get on the field till junior, senior year. Or you may not get on, on at all. So all those things are important. And I, I just try to get the kids to start thinking that way, you know, as early as possible. Um, preferably a sophomore. Um, and again, I asked them, listen, do you have any intention of playing college football? If you do, let's start this now. So, you know, I tell my guys, you don't need to go out and pay all this money for these programs and these things to sign up. We'll get you to wherever you want to get to. And, you know, it's, it's work, you know. I'll never forget it. Matt Goldman, uh, one of my best players who ended up going to Wake Forest, I was fielding phone calls for him 11 o'clock at night, 6 in the morning, um, had to meet one of the coaches that flew into Danbury Airport. He had five minutes. He flew into Danbury Airport. We talked for five minutes. He got back on his plane and then flew to uh, Pennsylvania because he had to meet with another player. Um, so it, it, it's it's a great experience for the student athlete, but it's, it's very important. And I, I try to make it a little bit easier for mom and dad and, and the student athlete. And I try to get that student athlete to whatever school he really wants to go to. So it's important. All right. Well, I think that about wraps up yeah. our first ever Wilton Town Talk. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Of course. All right.